All right. Hello, cocktails of T and the J family. We're just waiting for our guests. I guess I can introduce us. <laughs> um, Turquoise, my mom, Janice, sister Janice, and we are waiting for Mr. Marcus. Marcus. <laughs> Hello. Hey, what's up, y'all? Hey. hey. Thank How you. How y'all doing? You're great. Yeah. How are you? I'm amazing. Just got back to the crib. Just doing a little shopping. How's it going? It's going great. And my apologies earlier, like, I had the time so off. So no, off. no worries. It's okay. <laughs> and I was, I Googled, I was like, I was like, oh, shoot. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, hold on, it's not the right time. Right. Yeah, I Google, I was like, oh, what time is it in Cali right now? I was like, oh, okay, we got like four hours. <laughs> <laughs> I just zoomed back to the crib. <laughs> well, thank you Perfect so time. much for joining us. No um, so we're going to hop right into it. Um, how have you been maintaining during the pandemic? Um, it's been it's been all right. Um, at first, you know, we were inside. I was inside the house for real, you know, I wasn't doing too much. Uh, I wasn't doing too much, you know, I was kind of kicking it, but then uh, I was like, I got to get out this house. So yeah. started finding a couple of things to do. I actually, I shot a film during the pandemic. I shot a horror film oh, wow. um, during the pandemic um, called Call Time. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty, pretty fun. Um, what else? I did a couple music videos. So I direct and produce, you know, music videos. So I did a couple of those during the pandemic. Nice. And, and oh, uh, Proud Family. I was working on Proud Family a little bit during the pandemic as, as well, which was a different experience because sometimes um, we'll get to record with each other. If mm. you like in scenes with people sometimes, but usually it's still like a singular thing. So they were just doing, you know, everybody by themselves and, uh Usually the producers and stuff will be there, but we were connecting with the producers and everybody over Zoom. So they would be giving you direction and stuff over Zoom. And it's just really was the uh, sound guy there. So okay. that's cool. Nice. So you awesome. stay busy. Yeah. yeah. Try to stay busy. Try to stay busy <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Awesome. Good to hear that. And I'm so rude. So this is my mom, Janice. And my hey, mom. Hi. How you doing? How you doing? I'm well. I'm well. And yeah, I'm the bugaboo that's been in your DMs, <laughs> but that's neither. Yeah, here. Good. <laughs> All right. Um, so what made you want to get into acting? Oh, man, I started acting so early, uh, four years old. And um, wow. I used to dance on Venice Beach uh, when I was four, doing Michael Jackson and MC Hammer, uh, like, impersonations like impression you know doing dancing and stuff like that so um street performance so that was really cool that's kind of what made me want to get into acting and seeing like michael jackson and mc hammer on tv um starting to perform like that them and then you know there was a lady who was at the beach and uh she was like telling my mom like you gotta get him on tv and acting you know her parents were in casting so she gave the, the info to my mom and my mom submitted my picture into the agency and then I ended up being signed. So the the passion was just kind of wanting to be like where Michael Jackson and MC Hammer was on TV, you know, seeing Michael Jackson perform as a little kid. Um, I think automatically made me feel like, oh, I could do that. You know? mm -hmm. so. so they're your inspiration, huh? Or were your inspiration? Definitely, definitely. Cool. So how does it feel being part of history with not only have you done Moesha, but how does it feel being part of that cast? Oh, man. Um, it's, ama it's, a, it's an amazing thing, man. Uh, what has 
outcome of the show, you know, uh, from day one to now, 20 something years later, you know, could have never expected uh, the level of success that the show had. Like you can never guess that's going to happen to the show that you're becoming a part of. Right. So, um, you know, it's an amazing feeling to have a project that so many people hold close to them and really love, have such a love for the show. Mm-hmm. So many different age groups and um, ethnicities and just, you know, it being a great family show that had, you know, great morals and uh, great storylines that people really uh, could relate to. Um, you know, it's just like unreal. You know, we have such a huge family from from that. You know, everybody's like our extended family because we grew up in your households and mm-hmm. you guys were watching us, you know, and your private moments of your home you know you guys have that relationship with us so it's, it's really cool yeah, yeah we feel like we watched you grow up yeah and- uh-huh. <laughs> definitely you did i mean moesha for me was eight to 14 so six years yeah. and yeah that was me kind of growing up on tv yeah mm-hmm. i remember the episode where miles was uh smoking marijuana <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's that's real life right there. Uh, yeah. yeah, that was a, uh, I think that episode won some awards actually. So yeah. nice, awesome. So, what is one of your fondest memories from the Moesha show? Uh, let's see, fondest memory. Oh man, we have so many good memories from Moesha. I think. Let's see. Uh, one huge moment I remember, it really wasn't had to do with the show, but it was just on set that uh, when Whitney Houston came by the set. Oh, wow. That was like, uh, amazing thing, because it was like, uh, we took a break from one of the scenes. We're like, we're gonna take a little break. And uh, we take a break, I'm like sitting in the director's chair and it's kind of quiet on the set. And then it's like, you hear this like slow rolling, like chattering, <laughs> thundery type talking happening like, <laughs> I'm like what's going on like what's going on like and he was like, oh and he was, oh my god like, yeah I'm like what is going on and then all of a sudden you know around the side of the stage we see Whitney Houston come around the side of the stage and I'm like oh shoot it's Whitney Houston and Whitney sees me sitting in the chair and she like oh she I'm running up to me. It's like, I love you. you know? so that, was like, that was like a dope moment. Um, just, uh, man, it's like so many amazing moments. Uh, another great time. I think uh, <laughs> this is a funny story. Um, when DMX was on the show and they had that big concert, uh, I wasn't working that day when they were shooting the concert, but I told my mom, I'm like, oh, I got to go to the set. I got to meet DMX. And mom was like, all right, cool. Go down there, you know, because they had a bunch of other artists there, too. I, like, I want to meet DMX because I was always excited. Like, I had a couple key people in my in my CD player back then, and, oh, and DMX yeah, right. was definitely one of them. Yeah. So anytime those people came through, I'm like, I got to make sure I meet these people, you know. So um, we go to the set, downtown L.A., and I pull up, and... Uh, I think X, I don't know if he was there yet, but then somebody, they took me to where his trailer was once I was there hanging out, went over to see DMX and he like, yo, like he goes, he like, what up? <laughs> yo, he's like, yo, my wife loves you, man. Like his girl, his girl I don't know if it was, it was his wife, you know, the one he was ended up being with the longest for sure. Um, she's like, she loves you. And she was in the trailer and I meet her. He's like, man, we kicking it. And then, um, so lunch comes. He's like, man, I'm about to go, about to go over, over on Crenshaw, go get some chicken wings. I'm like, I'm trying to roll. He's like, come on, let's go. So now this is the worst decision I could have ever made in my life. Okay. <laughs> if anybody knows, DMX has a terrible driving record. Okay. Yeah. Terrible. Okay. And I'm going to tell you why. Because he's a he's the worst driver. Okay. <laughs> so um i asked my mom like yo can i ride with x to go get some wings she's like okay that's cool you know um hop in the, and he's got the sl drop top mercedes zooming okay we zoom out of the parking lot now this is downtown la it's a lot of one-way streets okay mm-hmm. first turn we're going the wrong way down a one way <laughs> dmx I'm like, what the hell? He busted 360 in the street. Boom. <laughs> like, it's like a scene out of one of his movies. <laughs> Damn, we shoot off. I'm like, okay, let me put my seatbelt on. <laughs> Step on my seatbelt. I'm looking, you know what I'm saying? But I'm trying to be cool. You know, I'm with DMX. I'm trying to be cool. Right. 
He driving all crazy. I'm like, okay, man, we make we make it we make it there. Safe to say, we make it there. It was def- I definitely was like by the end of the ride, like <laughs> <laughs> I'm driving back. You know, I'm only like 12, 13. I'm like, I'm driving back, man. Um, <laughs> So we get inside the Hot Wings Cafe. They go crazy. They're like, this DMX miles. Like, they go crazy, you know? <laughs> so, oh, yeah. Um, was that was, like, a really cool. And I, I kept back. And I'm like, Mom, that's just bad parenting. Well, what makes you think I go anywhere with the rapper? Like, no. He's a terrible driver. You know, like, talk about that the whole time. So that was a fun, that was a fun moment. I, I love that story. It's so funny. Definitely yeah. sticks out. <laughs> but a lot of great moments. I mean, it's endless moments, you know, endless great times. You know, I love certain people coming through the set, like Bernie Mac. Mm-hmm. I remember Bernie Mac one time. It was uh, it was my birthday, and he came, and I was like, oh, Uncle, Uncle, Uncle Bernie, it's my birthday. He's like, oh, what? He just went in his pocket. He, like, peeled off peeled off a couple hundred for me. Bam, there you go. Get yourself something nice. I'm like, oh, man, thanks, Uncle <laughs> Bernie. Like, I was like, really like, Unc. He, he taught me a lot of good things about being smooth and being player and just being a really cool person. You know, I really like Bernie back. So, yeah. yeah. That is amazing. Like, you have been blessed to be around some awesome people, some yeah. amazing people. Definitely, definitely. Like, we That's had some... Leg- legendary shows. You've been yeah. uh, everywhere. you Pretty Martin, much. Martin, everything. How is it working on the set of Martin? Oh, Martin was awesome. You know, um, I still remember the audition because I came in there with the attitude like, you know, this is mine. Because mm-hmm. I, I knew, you know, as far as look, I had that. As far as the charisma, I had that. And I just knew I had to just go ahead and convince them that I was the right person for the role. I think it was a little bit of thing with the age because I think they might have wanted to go a little bit older at first. But I came in and did such a good job on my audition that they literally like were like, oh, can you stay? And then they went and got Martin while they was he was rehearsing. They went and got him and had him come up and see me audition. And I just killed their body. They had him laughing. Boom, agent called, called us on the way home. Like they loved him, you know. So uh booked that, went to set. That's really a memorable time for me too, because that week was my birthday. Tisha Campbell. Um, Gina, she her birthday is on the 13th of October and mine's is on the 12th. And we worked that week of October on, on the show for my birthday. So they brought a cake out with both of our names and stuff. So that was like really awesome. And they just all loved me. They showed me a lot of love and we had a lot of fun. And like that experience is another thing I think that just pushed me to and to really love the business like that energy on that set the creativeness and the you know the high level of performance that they were moving on it was just it was really good for me uh and the way that they embraced me you know as a young kid but it's a funny story because at that time like my reading was okay and um when I booked it and then you know I learned the lines and and that's usually what I would do I would just memorize all the lines go over with my mom Mm -hmm. um Instead of like trying to read them and stuff like that, I would just memorize them. Like uh, my reading got a lot better once I was like doing scripts all the time every day. But originally, be like you know, if I had to just read it raw, I'll be taking my time. It's not gonna sound like a, a red line, you know. Um, so they changed the lines on me like right before we came in that day. Oh. And I had to try to read some of that stuff, and it was just bad. It was bad, <laughs> and oh. they were like worried. And my mom was like. No, don't worry about it. Like, just give them some time with the script. But they were like a little panicked. But I went over the lines, boom, came in for all, uh, the rehearsal and was body and everything. And they're like, oh, yes, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. He's, like, he's got it. He still got it. Mm-hmm. So that was a, that was a cool thing. Um, but yeah, man, there's levels to this, like doing it at a young age. But mm-hmm. I just used to, I just loved it. Loved I, could, it. I couldn't, I don't think if me being a kid, I would have been able to to do that, like stick to a script, reading it and memorizing all the lines. I don't think I could do yeah, that. It's, it's, it's a very big, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Very and I smart. think you're the perfect fit to play Martin. <laughs> In a biopic, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you guys yeah. say. <laughs> um, so what was one of your favorite characters that you have played? Cause you also played on um, Roll Bounce. Mm, Roll Bounce, another yeah. Cinderella story, take yeah. the lead. Yeah. Um, Nothing cruise. Oh, you, red tails. I think, yeah, I think, oh, that's a tough one, man, because all those characters are really good. Like, take the lead, another Cinderella story, really dope. Um, red tails probably would be, 
Um, one of my favorites, just the whole experience of that shooting that film, mm -hmm. you know, that's, you know, the largest budget project I've been a part of other than probably Moesha because it's ongoing, but, you know, one time project, three months, $50 million budget, you know, George Lucas, you can't get any bigger than George Lucas, you know, yeah. and he's a really great guy. He treated us really well. Um, the camaraderie with the guys was really dope. We went through military training and stuff like that. And that was a, a, a crazy experience, you know, really dope experience just seeing how far we could push ourselves as far as our bodies and our mental. Um, so that was like a really dope experience and playing, getting into that character as far as like the time piece of 1944 and what that feels like getting to talk to the Tuskegee airmen to become them and, see what their stories was like and it was like really awesome talking to these like 80 90 year old men 70 80 90 I think they were like they're old they're old guys you know but they they had so much youthfulness like when they jumped into that time of telling the story and going back to them being 20 something and you could just see them and they're like man that's not how it happened <laughs> like so it was so amazing you know um that was a really cool experience. And then working with um, Terrence Howard, Cubigan Jr., like yes. you can't oh, ask for better people to be, you know, working with, you know, they're such like great mentors and, you know, you have questions that, you know, they're, they're like, don't be afraid. Like Terrence was really open to, you know, if we had any questions that could help, you know, with our characters. And he, he actually ran an exercise with us where we all kind of sat around, we went to the park, we all sat around and like, read each other's lines which was a really dope exercise kind of to see how somebody else might give a certain type of contrast to the lines and just play with it a little bit and that was like a really fun exercise so nice. um learning wise I feel like I learned a lot on that project um just about just depth of character also working with Nate Parker who you know she, like well, you know shadow Denzel so I got to learn a lot of things that Denzel does to create characters and how he breaks it down because I'm watching Nate Parker do the same thing um that was fun you know awesome. and we got to go to the White House off that so that's probably like my most standout um role I would say far as experience altogether I love that. That's I love, I love that story. That's awesome. And you did a great job. I love yes. that movie. Book. Yes, you, you always do a great job. Always, yeah. always. But you work very hard. Clearly, what do you do in your spare time? What do you do for fun when you're free? Uh, man, I like to go outside. I be outside. You know, I like. To go out. <laughs> um, I like the club. I like to take trips. Um, I do music. Is like uh. It's like a work hobby, you know, something I'm working on. Uh, would love to take it to the next level with it, but uh, it's been a nice hobby. I've gotten some money off of it, but I really enjoy music. Music was like my first love, you know, dancing first. And that's why I started acting, you know, music is a big part of it. So I'm, I'm working on some music um, and that's going really well. Uh, actually, my new film coming out, um, we just did the soundtrack for that. So that's going to be awesome. Mm -hmm. Got some good surprises with that. And uh Let's see, what, what else do I like to do? Man, I love sports. You know, I used to bowl and play basketball a lot. I've been doing it a little bit less. I had a back injury. Uh, somebody had rear-ended me not too long ago. Uh, well, a couple of years ago now. But uh, that injury kind of stopped me from being able to ball as much and stuff like that. But I love sports. Um, I just love good times. I like, like, like making good memories. I like going new places. I love I spend all my money on food, so like I love yeah, the food. The club. So, whatever that. the good food is, you know. In that's, California, that's, that's they got good. the best places to eat. <laughs> yeah, we got a lot of good good restaurants in Cali. I don't know if that, there's some cities that are definitely stomping on us. We got a lot of good stuff. Maybe I've been here too long, but <laughs> I love traveling and getting into like each place's hot spots. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Great, so nice. You mentioned music, so who would like who would be your ideal person to work with musically? Uh, ideal, like a Kanye, Jay Z. That's like my lane. I would feel like in music, people always be like, you know, you like a Jay Z, you like a, you know, on that level of artistry, because uh, I'm like a lyricist and I, you know, I can play with the rhythm real well, and I can, I'm very uh, versatile when it comes to styles. Also, like I don't just stick to one sound you know so those are people i look up to but there's a lot of dope artists kendrick and a lot of these yeah. uh, 
I like some of these younger artists too as well. Um, who did I say I wasn't gonna forget? It's a lot of dope artists that I like. Sometimes I'll be forgetting to put them on my list, but I just love music. So um, who would be some of the dream people to work with? I got to record with Snoop and Timberland one time. That was mm-hmm. awesome. Um, in the studio, I was hanging out with Snoop and I got to jump on a song with him. That was really cool. Um, Timbo said he couldn't find the files though, so that was kind of annoying. Oh no! <laughs> I, like waited a long time to hit him about it, and files. I don't know. Sometimes they get lost on those hard drives. Those hard drives come up missing, or so. yeah. But um, who else? Who else would be dope? Man, there's so many artists I like uh, that I would love to work with. Uh, any of the female rappers, I love all of them. We can always get on a record. <laughs> like um but yeah ideal like kanye a kendrick i like favorite. you know the j coles i like the real rappers you know yeah. Jazz, rappers, yeah. us too yeah mm-hmm. like those those tupac vibes yeah and i like the turn up i like the turn up cast too you know what i'm saying but just you know i don't feel you on that all right well, if you weren't famous, like what would you say you would be doing now if you weren't famous? Robbing people. No, I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> um, what would I be doing? Let's see. I don't even know. Like, this is my life. Like, mm-hmm. I, I don't even, I never figured out a backup plan. What else I would be doing? But um, I'm a hands on person. Like, I'm really smart. I like putting stuff together, so I don't know, maybe some type of engineering of some sort or into tech or, you know, I might be into that because I was always really good at math, always really good at science and stuff like that. And um, So I don't know. Uh, that's a tough one for me. <laughs> Uh, be a doctor. I think you definitely with. met your calling. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. definitely. yeah, no, I mean... It's it's been a, it's been a a long time doing this, you know, and I, I just love it. I have a real passion for acting. I just love the creativity. I love everything around the entertainment business. So I've taken other hats now, you know, producing, directing. Um, I just love I love it. I have a great understanding of what it takes to start and finish projects. And now I'm getting more into the business side of you know selling my own projects and stuff like that, and on the creative end. So. I'm enjoying it. It's like, this is my life. Because you also have VVS Models. Yes. VVS Models is going well. We just did a video with Wiz Khalifa and GLC. Uh, GLC is from the uh, song Spaceships with Kanye West. Mm-hmm. You got record we just did with them. I casted that. Um, what else? We just had some girls on a couple of TV shows. Uh, Tony Tony Roman, whatever her name is. Tony Tammy. Tammy Roman. Tammy, yeah. that's what it is. Tammy Roman. She has her show. I got some models on there. Um, where else the girls been? Maybe just popping in and out on different projects. It's been going good. Actually, we're about to take a trip to Dallas like in two weeks. We're gonna be hosting some events. I'm gonna take like six models out of town and we'll be hosting out there. Um, take us three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what's uh, you've been in the entertainment industry pretty much your whole life, so I'm sure you've heard a lot of stuff about yourself. What's the most interesting rumor you've heard about yourself in the media or that you've read? I don't believe none of the stuff you read, but <laughs> maybe boy, that boy, it'd be some fluff, boy. Let me tell you. Um, no, I haven't really heard any bad rumors, like, I'm not really in the rumor space, it's not mm-hmm. a lot of gossip about me. You know, yeah, I never uh, hear anything. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, awesome. That's great. All right. So, what would you like people to remember about you? Uh, I would like people to remember. Let's see. I'm not done with my journey yet. So, uh, but as of now, at least what they take away from me and this, you know, uh, just that, you know, I went all gas, no brakes on my dreams um, and was able to manifest things that, you know, 
I really wanted to do in the business. I never took any shortcuts, you know, and I just worked hard for everything that I got and I deserved everything that I got. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. And um, another thing would be just for them, you know, to take away is that just go after your dreams, whatever you feel like you want to do. The only person that can stop you is yourself. You just have to have that, so you know, yourself and go do it. So true. Um, I have a question that I didn't have on the list. Did you watch the verse battle? <laughs> yeah, you know I had to watch my boys, man. <laughs> boys crazy, boy. <laughs> um, no, I did. I, I, I enjoyed it thoroughly. It was very entertaining. It was. You know, it was. You know, those, are, those are all my guys. So, you know, it was fun to watch. Uh, great for them to be able to get their flowers because they all are legends. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it's just funny, man. <laughs> Ray J's hilarious. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. he like, doesn't take like, anything serious, yeah. but he does, but he doesn't. But it's like, I love him for being him all the time. It's great. Yeah. 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 He seems like he's really down to earth. Yeah. Ray J's a cool dude. He's yeah. really cool. That's my <laughs> big bro. Not even trying to be funny. Without I even love trying. It. Yeah. yeah. That's so true. Yeah. <laughs> I had just talked to him right before the verses, and we was kicking around some ideas because he wants to start this network so we'll be kicking around some ideas just some, just some talks of things going on man with me and ready today so that's that's bro we'll be doing right. some great we'll stuff. Be watching for sure yeah. yeah yeah um is there anything that we did not touch on that you would like to discuss um uh, i would just say uh my movie, Bomb Pizza, is coming out soon. We're working on getting, setting up, finishing up the distribution. We're going to be doing a premiere soon. That's the one with the soundtrack that I did with Jay Stone from All Money In, which was, he's Nipsey's first artist. It was Nipsey's first artist on All Money In. Um, he did a couple records on the soundtrack with me. Super dope. Um, what else is going on right now that everybody needs to be aware of? I think that's the biggest project right now I want everybody to pay attention to. Bomb Pizza is coming soon. Um, I also got a TV show called The Route that I'm working on pitching right now. That's going to be dope when that hits the, hits the screens. So keep an eye out just on some of the stuff I got coming up. Um, other than that, we need, you know, all the peace and love in the world. Yeah. It's a crazy time. We want people to, you know, love more, uh, let stuff go more, you know, and just... Let's just have more peace in the world if we can, man. Let all the drama go. You know, somebody make you mad. Try to just shrug it off and keep it moving, man. Like, yeah, my mom, my mom needs sleep. to hear that yes. last that yes. last one. We only <laughs> have so much time on the earth. We don't got time to be stressing, worrying, yeah. just spending any any extra energy on anything that's negative. You know, it's just it's time for us to stay positive. You know and move into this next space with great energy because we, we're approaching a tough time yeah. and people are not willing to come together and love each other more and care about each other more we're not gonna make it right. yeah i agree 100 percent. you're absolutely right so that's what i try to that's the energy i go about every day with i'm trying to you know worry less love more um and just, you know, just care about each moment that's happening around me, care about people. That's that's the most important thing, you know. Yep, your life will go much smoother. Yes. If you let all the negativity go and just live, live peacefully. Yes. It'll also go smooth if you react to some of the negativity. <laughs> no. <laughs> It'll still go smooth. <laughs> No. Oh, mom. You know, it's mom. Big. She, she, she's not going to change. She's set in her ways, but you're absolutely right. Absolutely yeah. right. <laughs> I hear it, though, because, you know, sometimes people will make you want to react, you know. Yeah. But yeah. I just learned that even if somebody upsets me, I try to relay how I feel in the best way possible because. If they're ah, I'm flaring up or talking crazy, me flaring up is not going to get us anywhere. They're not going to want to hear what I have to say. So I, I like to just talk to people directly, lose all the extra emotion around what it is and just, you know, get to the point, stick yeah. to the facts and resolve it. You don't get positive results by exacerbating things. Nope. <laughs> nope. Not at all. But um, if you would like to... 
discuss. You don't have to. You could absolutely decline. Um, do you have any thoughts on like gun control, any political views that you see going on that you disagree with or agree with? And again, if you don't have to answer. Um, I mean, with the gun control, it's a tough thing because, you know, we live under a government. So at any point that we don't aren't able to protect ourselves from them, it's a problem. Mm-hmm. So we have to be able to protect ourselves. So people not being able to access uh, automatic weapons is not, not something that I would say is the best um, resolve. I feel like we still need to be able to, you know, have our, our right as in the amendment. Um, but also better evaluations of the people who are receiving the weapons would be great. Um, and it's, you know, we got bad mental health issues in America, you know what I'm saying? So it's not the guns, it's the people with the guns, you know what I mean? So that's all it is. I always you know. say it should be definitely a, a longer process. Um, a mental evaluation should definitely be completed. <laughs> so I, I don't understand why isn't that being done already? Um, yeah, some places it's just, you know, it's easier to get a weapon. Some places yeah. it's a little bit harder. Um, but that's a tough battle right there. It's a tough space. Um, and the world is, it's wild out there, man. Everybody just needs to be safe, be vigilant, you know, sad some of these things that happen because like you can't foresee or Mm -hmm. prepare for something like that really you know what i mean there are some preparations that can be done like the school thing was very sad as some preparation that may have better ways that the police should have been operating and handling things you know they're supposed to be the heroes and they're standing outside like cowards with a shoot when and y'all go and shoot people who ain't doing nothing all the time so i don't understand what's the issue but i understand because that's a tricky situation because it's somewhat like you almost have hostages and you don't want to run in there and end up you know, it's more kids dying, but that's a tough situation. You know, we live in a tough world with, where people have to make tough decisions every day. Um, you know, I'm not a fan of the police, but that's a very tough job. There are some good police out there, mm-hmm. um, you know, but there are some good cops out there. I've met I've met them, you know what I mean? And yeah, we have to. Uh, uh, that's a tough job you know, for those guys every day. Like we don't see what it's like on a constant. So when that bad incident happens, it's crazy. But some of those cops are just bad people in uniform too. You know what I mean? And they don't need to be on the job. They need to definitely be, you know, clearing out the trash the same way that they do the streets. You got to do the same thing in those police offices and clean up the trash, you know? So, um, but are we prepared to police ourselves? I think I don't think we're there yet. No, <laughs> definitely not. You know, um, so, you know, that whole setup, of course, when you know the history, like I'm somebody who studies a lot of stuff, when you know the history of the police, yeah. it's, it, you know, we are all in the same thing. It's, it's just transformed, you know what I mean? And uh, it's crazy because it's like, I'm a thinker. So, you know, I hear when Kanye said, we choose to be slaves, you know, it's like people, we chose to be slaves. He didn't understand what he's saying. It's like, and we still are to this day choosing to be within this system of what it's set up to be. And if you don't stand up and we can't get everybody on one accord, it's impossible for us to get everybody in unison and on one thing. And that's the tough part about how they separate everybody with so many different groups for us to fall in to keep us separated and not focus on what's going on you know so uh maybe i'm talking too much but uh yes i'm a a aware person you know uh, we love it you know as an actor you always focus on your stuff but i am somebody who is aware to um uh what's going on on a daily day basis out here in the world and you know it just needs to get better you know uh, you know if there is space where i can show up for things that help people i love doing you know service to the people and helping any way i can uh but it's a big battle and i don't know if i'm the person who can uh 
leading the change that's coming. But, you know, if there are people who aren't there out there, the revolutionaries, you know, I do have their back. There are people who want to see change for whatever it is when there's, you know, misfortune and, you know, wrongs being done to people. I think it's important that people look out for other groups of people and stuff like that. I, I don't know about us sitting on the billions over to Ukraine because, you know, we're yeah. still kind of hurting over here. But, you know, it's sad what's going on over there. So, you know, I do have, you know, there is empathy there for people, you know, getting hurt, bomb shot, you know, innocent people. It's terrible, you know. But we got a lot of that over here going on. We got a lot of people hungry, got a lot of people without housing. We got a lot of things that need to get right in America. Um, before I would say sending billions of dollars over to other people. But I agree 100%. I don't make the rules. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. You know, so. All right, we got to prioritize. And I, you know, the Ukraine, we, the millions of dollars to Ukraine, I can understand that if it was actually helping. I don't see how it's helping mm -hmm. the people out there. And take care of home too, though. You got to make sure we we straight. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like like you said, there's a there's a lot of poverty out here, a lot of needs, homeless people. So that money definitely could have went towards not not trying no, to no, help. But, there, man. I hope people are buckling down yeah. and looking at different ways to make money and stuff because. You know, these a lot of these jobs, people's jobs, they're gonna lose jobs, man. We got artificial intelligence coming to swoop in and take a lot of regular jobs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even people have to gain skills, you know, be on the internet, try to learn other skills, you know, yeah. other skill sets, learn something that's in the find out something that's in the tech world or something and find out what you can do because that's where the, the world's going towards something different. Yeah. And we can be left behind as a people not advancing and understanding that the change is coming because that's what they try to do is leave us leave people behind yeah they're not concerned with the class that's not going to make it no. <laughs> so no, we have to definitely prepare ourselves for the change you know Absolutely. yeah man I, I love listening to you speak yes. you're very intelligent yes <laughs> i indeed. love it you ladies have any anything oh i just want to say thank you so yeah. much for yeah, coming on our you. show Ooh. Oh, we've, yeah. been, we've watched you grow up. We love you. We just wish you the best. We're going to follow you. We're going to continue to support you. And we just appreciate it so much. Thank you so much for coming. Thank to you today. for great. I appreciate it. It's a great interview. Shout out to you guys for doing your thing. And thanks Thank for loving you. the show and my work. And I appreciate y'all. All right. All right.